bloody hell. Look at this. Okay, that's fine. All right. Oh, hell yeah. We're good to go. Since the spring of 2021, I've been waiting to begin a project during the autumn months surrounding the farmlands of Western Massachusetts. To the east of the Berkshire Mountains sits the towns of Granby, Hadley, and Sunderland. These picturesque towns personify the American landscape and the hardworking farmers who provide for these communities. I have been so eager to get out and start capturing images that I've been scouting for the last six months. But that excitement and eagerness was short-lived because sometimes things just don't go to plan. Boy oh boy, it is an absolutely stellar morning. Um, I got a really early jump on today around 6 a.m. and uh, now it's around 7.30. It took me a little while to get out here. We're in the farmlands again. I've never been to this section and we've got this really incredible fog coming off. Uh, this freshly tilled field is just gorgeous. I love the dichotomy between the really dark dirt over here and the really light, uh, freshly knocked down stalks of corn. It's just beautiful, absolutely beautiful right now. So I've given up on this composition. It's not, it's not gonna work. Um, I tried to get everything to work out and line up and ultimately the fog has just completely shifted over to the hills. And also another factor that I didn't take into consideration was all the cars that would be coming down this road. So I'm right in the middle of it setting up my, my four by five and every time I'd start to compose, the car would start to pull up behind me and I'd have to move, so constantly moving the tripod back and forth, back and forth, and then recomposing and refocusing. It's, it's absolutely a nightmare. And uh, I'll just take it on the 645 and see how that comes out. So I love a few things about this image, and obviously, as I mentioned, the difference in colors, but there's some subtle detail here in this image. It's, uh, it's really simple, and I think that's sort of the beauty of it. The colors are, are all in the forefront of the image, and, and I like that. Remove all the colors, and this image kind of becomes a little bit more not as exciting, but you get that great dichotomy between those yellows and, and those dark, dark, dark browns on the right, and you get that sort of that tan transition of color in the middle. first time I scouted this location, I had found myself between sunny skies and impending doom. So it is October 23rd and we are back here at the abandoned farmhouse and we're gonna shoot it on some Provia 100F on the 4x5. Uh, the last time I was out here was about three weeks ago and I was really hoping that the colors would have changed um, and they have for the most part, except for the tree right here by this house. It's still pretty green. I was hoping for it to be yellow or red.
Uh, so that was sketchy. I just went to get out and take a shot with my 645. And uh, as I was walking out, there's, there's no real trees other than the one directly in front of me. And uh, as I went out there, a bolt of lightning hit probably about, about a quarter mile away. too close <laughs> way too dangerous and the thunder very very loud very uh, you could feel it in my chest and uh, I was like well this obviously isn't a great idea to stand with a tripod and a metal camera that's being close to the tallest thing in the entire area other than the tree so I decided to come back and wait for the rain to stop now that it stopped I'm gonna get back out there and take a photo after letting the storm pass, I rattled off 15 consecutive exposures on my Mamiya 645 with the uh, the beautiful 55 millimeter lens, which is my favorite. Uh, the small farmhouse is obviously my subject, but the accents of the tree and that the geoprism just sitting under there, it really helps bring a little bit more to the scene. Right now, this is like my absolute favorite weather to shoot in where it's rainy, where it's dark. You got dark, dark, dark clouds off in the background behind the house. Get that ambient train noise. Uh, but you also have some sun breaking through the clouds, which is really, really cool. Um, it's the absolute perfect time to be photographing such an interesting subject. And I think I should have brought my four by five for this occasion. One thing I really like to do when I'm trying to find a composition is just try to walk around a scene and, and get a feel for it from all different angles. And, and that really kind of helps build the compositions. And what I've done here is kind of build this, this contact sheet that's not really a contact sheet, but to show you just exactly what I mean when I talk about finding different angles and finding the right composition. I think for the most part, I really liked approaching this scene while looking at the right front of the house with a clear view of the car, but uh, the shed in the back really just kind of felt like it was crowding the scene and uh, it, it just kind of became a struggle with that one little aspect. I do like the power lines going over the top of the image. I think it makes your mind wander a little bit because if you were to look at this image without the context of this video, you would see that it's just a farmhouse in the middle of farmland you wouldn't have any idea of where a road is or where uh, a driveway may be or, or really where it's settled. So those power lines kind of indicate a little bit more, help you kind of connect it uh, a little bit more to a story. Early morning sunlight and a crisp fall morning set the scene using my 210 millimeter rodent stock. Now it's just a game of sitting here and waiting for that, that sun to peek out from those clouds. Get that shot, there's some really interesting clouds in the background. But with Provia, color positive film, you have to be precise with your exposures or you're gonna have a bad time. So, uh, I'm gonna wait till I get that perfect sunlight to take a meter reading and then go from there. So from the get-go, I really wanted to shoot this project on color positive film and the film I chose was Fuji uh, Provia 100F. Got it. And the reason why I chose Provia was because Velvia has been outlawed in the United States. Uh, Velvia really is kind of perfect for fall because of those, those bright colors. Uh, it really pops with a, a super saturated film like Velvia. Um, Provia is sort of in the same vein, but uh, not quite as vibrant. The only tree that has some colors on it is the one behind me. And uh, it's kind of the reason why I brought the Mamiya 645 is so that I can capture some things 
and sort of a, a, freeing, uh, a freeing attempt at documentary photography uh, while I do this stuff with the 4x5 because I don't have a ton of Pro Via 100F. I have, I think, 25 sheets left. And uh, it's only a matter of time before Fuji decides to discontinue that. Shots fired, I'm sorry. I don't mean that as an insult, Fuji. It's just the, the state of affairs. On this day, I decided I would go out and try to photograph some of the barns out here in Western Massachusetts. And uh, the great thing about these barns is that they are also curing tobacco at this time of year. So I just went to a gentleman's house to see if I could photograph this barn where they're curing tobacco. Uh, he told me that he doesn't own the barn. In fact, a lot of the barns back here are owned by one family. So I went down to where he told me that family lives and I asked if I could take a picture of this barn in particular because I really like some of the trees and the foliage and the foreground. And they were like, yeah, absolutely. And then I asked if I could take a picture of them and they were like, no, why would you want that? So instead of just sort of wearing out my welcome and uh, forcing the issue, I, uh, I just said thank you so much for allowing me to do that. I'll be out of your hair in no time. So I want to capture this image pretty quickly while the sun is still kind of, there's intermittent clouds right now. It's making it kind of difficult because when the sun comes through, it looks absolutely stunning. But when the sun goes behind the clouds like it is right now, it's kind of dull and, uh, not super lively. So I want to sit here and wait for the clouds to move a little bit, get that sun out and uh, capture what promises to be a pretty darn good image. One thing I always forget with this 90 millimeter SA is that it is just so much darker than what it looks like in person or with a, uh, the 210 rodent stock that I was just using. So uh, it makes it kind of difficult, but it is what it is. I got a picture with the Mamiya 645 as soon as I got here. And uh, that was when the sun was perfect. Now the sun's starting to peek out. So I want to get this exposure and uh, nail it. So after taking the four by five image, I, uh, I decided to make sure that I got something on the 645 and to be totally honest, I developed my 4x5 images backwards, so they developed very, very unevenly and were completely unusable, which you will see shortly with the interior barn shot. This could have been a day ruined and one that I wouldn't even know until I developed two months later, but I'm glad that I had my shots on the Mamiya 645 there so I could fall back on something and have something that really kind of exemplified the scene. So this is going to be kind of a difficult shot because once the sun comes out from uh, behind the clouds, we're going to have really harsh highlights, really deep shadows. And as you can see, I got a lot of front tilt on this front standard. And the reason is because there's a lot of tobacco above us. And uh, I want to try to get that stuff in focus and just kind of make a nice clear path down the line. But another kind of disorienting fact is a lot of this wood up on the top is super warped. So it's kind of going like this, or maybe you guys can see it better if I do it like that. And uh, because of that, it's gonna be kind of a disorienting image. None of it's perfect. It's all just completely misshapen, but my focus is to make sure that I'm lined up with the back right in the middle, and then put that front standard up, tilt it, and just get a beautiful image coming from top to bottom, but this is gonna be an experimental shot because I've never had this much front standard tilt. And uh, I quite frankly don't know how it's gonna go, especially with, uh, with the interesting metering scenario that we uh, have created for ourselves.
And this is the image. Note the markings from my Stearman Press 445 showing the underdeveloped parts, but one other thing I want to note is that this shot was completely blown in the highlights, and kind of what I alluded to before, it's a very, very tough metering scene, especially when the light is changing so quickly. Uh, you get those really harsh highlights. It's really, really tough uh, to, to get a perfect exposure, especially on color positive film. So it just goes to show you that sometimes it's not all roses. I just took two shots there, one at 1 30th of a second at f5.6 and then f5.6 at 1 8th of a second just to see how they're going to differentiate. Um, they're sort of like the in-between. It's really hard to meter in there because of the, uh, the harsh lighting scenario, dark, deep shadows pretty harsh highlights. So it was saying somewhere between one fourth to, to one half of a second with the, the shadows in mind, and then around one sixtieth with the highlights in mind. So I kind of went at this weird in between. I don't know if that's gonna work out, but we will find out. And I'm gonna show you guys the results of both of those. I thought these two shots are really interesting comparisons to note. Um, the different shutter speeds to, to help meter for different uh, aspects of this image. And you can see just how dramatically different they are, even with only uh, two stops between the shutter speed. I think in honor of all this tobacco being cured, why not uh, enjoy the fruits of this agricultural labor. Farmlands in Western Massachusetts are known for one thing, and that is growing tobacco. Named after the river that the tobacco is grown next to, the Connecticut broadleaf tobacco is used all over the world, and it grows here and only right here. Hey everyone, thank you all so much for sticking through to the end of this video and uh, hanging out with me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. That one took a very, very long time to complete. And uh, there were some mishaps along the way. Some parts were hard, some parts were easy, but we got through it together and I appreciate your patience there. But because this has been kind of a, well, kind of a weird year so far, I wanna do a little bit of a giveaway and uh, it's gonna be kind of an odd one. You're gonna have to go back to the beginning all I want you to do is to tell me the name of the song that was playing in my car at the beginning of this video, or if you can name the band or the song or even the TV show that it was from, you will be selected the winner, as long as you're the first to do so. And uh, your prize will be a four by five or a four by six print that I make of your choosing from this video. So uh, whoever gets it first gets the print, just go ahead and comment below and I'll hook you up. Also, go check out my Patreon if you are not already subscribed or a pledge or a patron. I don't even know really the proper verbiage, but go on over there and uh, and pledge, become a Patreon patron. Again, I, don't, I still don't know the things, but go on over there and help support the channel. It goes a long way in, in helping make these videos. And it goes a long way in, uh, in really being able to build a better community with you guys. So I'm gonna get out of here, go and uh, edit this footage. And uh, I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye.
Don't adjust your screen. I was totally just walking backwards. I wasn't putting that in reverse. This could have been a day ruined, but I'm glad that I had Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia. <laughs> All right, so I just took my shot with the Intrepid. I'm super blown out. Sorry about that. How's that? A little bit better. I'm also way out of focus. Let me fix that too. 